Today, I'm going to talk about spiritual warfare. I'm going to specifically talk about how to engage in spiritual warfare through prayer. There's a right way to pray as a child of God if you encounter spiritual warfare. But it's important that you understand your authority and dominion as a child of God. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all of the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You must understand your authority over the devil, and you must use this authority and stand your ground in spiritual warfare. And you must understand that the devil has no power over you because you are a child of God. As a child of God, you are seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father in the position of power and authority. And you have to understand that from this place, you speak God's word and declare God's word and you enforce God's word over every circumstance. What kind of warfare do you fight? You take the word of God and you speak what God's word says about you, about the devil and about that situation. So for example, if you're, if you're experiencing a challenge in your relationship, you're going to tell the devil, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I am a child of God. And the Bible tells me that I have already overcome you and this circumstance. And devil, I rebuke you and I resist you as a child of God. And you take your stand as a child of God. And when you're engaging in warfare, you're enforcing the word of God and the will of God for that circumstance. When you submit to God, and, and the way you submit to God is you submit to God's word. When you submit to God and you resist the devil, he will flee. How do you submit to God? You submit to God by submitting to God's word. How do you submit to God? You submit to God's word by, by, by aligning yourself with what God's word says about you. For example, if it's an area of healing, you submit to God by taking what God's word says. You, you submit to God by submitting to God's word. You see, it's not possible to submit to God without submitting to God's word. I want you to understand that you're not alone. You have God on your side. The Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Nothing and no one can successfully come against you as a child of God. In the place of spiritual warfare, you've got to understand who you are. The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. You are the overcoming child of God. And God loves you and he's always with you. In the person of his Holy Spirit, he lives on the inside of you. He said in his word, he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You've got to understand who you are. You're a child of God. Luke 10, 19 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is what God says about you. You already have the victory. And 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Have the victory as a child of God. Well, so three important things I want you to remember. First point I want you to know as you're, as you're reminding yourself who you are, First, you are already victorious and you're already delivered. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, you have been translated from the terrain of darkness. You are not in the devil's terrain. You are in God's kingdom. You belong to a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. Satan has no authority over you. You must know this as a child of God. A second important point I want you to remember, you are more than a conqueror. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Jesus Christ won the victory and he gave you the victory. And in the place of spiritual warfare, you maintain your victory using the word of God. And the third point I want you to remember, you must remain and maintain the victory by faith. You already have the victory, but you must resist the enemy in the place of prayer by faith with the word of God and remain in victory. God will not do this for you. That's why he gave you his word. That's why he gave you his spirit. God gave you his life because he gave you everything to make you always win. It's so important as a child of God that there's some things you have to do to remain in victory. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It's important that you know this. The just shall live by faith. There may be times when you may be attacked. But the Bible tells us we have an adversary. But you see, there are some things you must do to stay in victory. The Bible says you must resist the enemy. How? With the word of God. 
The Bible says that we're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. It tells us that we have an enemy who may come against us, who may come against us. But the Bible also tells us what to do to always maintain the victory and remain in victory. The child of God will remain in victory by faith. And how do you pray spiritual warfare praise? You take the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, and declare God's word about that circumstance. And every time you declare God's word by faith, the Bible says the enemy will flee. And the third important area I want to cover is you must understand the kind of adversary we have. The Bible tells us we have an adversary. He is the devil. The Bible says we're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. What is a device? A device could be any kind of tool that's used to accomplish something. Every time the enemy attacks, he uses devices. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. Let me say this. Any time where there's ignorance, whoever is coming against you will have an advantage over you. That's why God says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. As a child of God, the greatest advantage you have is God's word. That's what the Bible calls the word of God light. It, it opens your eyes to see. It gives you illumination. And that's why you must stay in God's word. You're going to remain in victory. The enemy triumphs in darkness. He triumphs where the truth is, is veiled. Three areas where the enemy triumphs. One, if you're a Christian who is rebellious, the enemy will have an advantage over you. Two, if you're a Christian who is ignorant of God's word, the enemy will have an advantage over you. And three, if you're a Christian, you're, you're dealing with unbelief. The enemy will have an advantage over you. Who is the common denominator in all these three factors? It's God's word. If you are rebellious against God's word, the enemy will have an advantage over you. If you are ignorant of God's word, the enemy will have an advantage over you. And also, if you are in unbelief, you don't believe what God's word says, the enemy will have an advantage over you. So how are you going to engage in warfare? By knowing who the enemy is and how he attacks. He attacks you bringing lies. He uses lies. And how do you engage in prayer? First, by knowing what God's word says about that circumstance. And how do you engage in spiritual warfare? Let's say, for example, in your health. The enemy comes against you in your body by bringing sickness. You want to be very, very knowledgeable of what God's word says about your divine health. The Bible says you are, you are a partaker of God's divine nature. The Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. So you're going to take the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And you're going to tell the devil, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You are a liar and I rebuke you and I bind the spirit of sickness. Take authority over that, over that sickness in the place of prayer and bind the sickness and tell the devil, devil, I rebuke you. I command you to go. And I want to say this. If there's an area where you, where you where God has shown you and where there's an area of rebellion, I want to say that one of the things you must understand, you will never be victorious against the enemy if you're in rebellion. The Bible says to submit to God and then resist the enemy and then he will flee. So before you even begin dealing with the enemy, first you must bring yourself under the word of God. If the Holy Ghost has shown you an area where you've been in rebellion, just go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I just I just come to you and I repent of this rebellion. Whatever the area of rebellion is. You see, what God has, has given you in Christ is too expensive to allow anything to rob you of it. Even rebellion is just, too, it, 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 it is foolishness to allow anything to rob you of all the best of God. God loves you so much. And the day he gave you Jesus, he gave you everything because God wants you to enjoy the, uh, the awesome life he's given you. So how do you engage in spiritual warfare? You must first make sure that you brought yourself under the word of God. You will never be victorious against the enemy if you are not in alignment with God's word. Because what you use against the enemy is the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. You use the word of God in prayer. That's what always maintains your victory. So you must make sure that you are, you are in alignment with God's word. First, that you are submitted to God's word by doing God's word, by following God's word, by believing God's word, by not rebelling against God's word, by submitting to God's word. The Bible says when you submit to God and you resist the enemy, 
he will flee. So how do you resist the enemy? You take the word of God and, it, and you speak to that circumstance, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your health, whatever that mountain is, you speak to that mountain and you tell that mountain, mountain, you've got to go. And the Bible says when you submit to God and you resist the enemy, he will flee. And when you speak to that mountain, whatever the mountain is, it could be a challenge of any kind, it will be moved. Three important things I want you to understand. First, you must know the enemy's nature. He's deceptive and he thrives where there's ignorance, ignorance of God's word. And second, the devil has no authority over you as a child of God. And third, the enemy can only take advantage over you and take authority over you if you relinquish your authority to him through ignorance because the bible says in hosea chapter 4 verse 6 my people perish for lack of knowledge the enemy will have an advantage over you if you are ignorant so you must make sure you are well versed in the word of god the second is unbelief you must make sure that you hold on to and you believe the word of god and the third you must make sure you have no area of rebellion you must make sure you are properly submitted to the word of God. I want you to understand that victory is yours as a child of God. As a child of God, you're not trying to get victory. You already have the victory. It's so important in spiritual warfare to understand the nature of the warfare. You're not trying to get the victory. You already have the victory. Jesus Christ already gave you the victory, but you must understand how to remain in the victory and maintain the victory. You must also know who the enemy that comes against you is. The Bible says he is Satan, the devil, and you must know his nature. He's sneaky. He's sneaky and only uses life. And how does he attack you? He attacks you in your mind by bringing suggestions that will try to deviate from the word of God. That will try to turn you away from the word of God. While the Bible says you must submit to God's word by believing God's word and holding on to God's word and taking your stand on God's word. The Bible says when you submit to God by his word and you, and you resist the devil, he will flee. And how do you engage in spiritual warfare? By taking God's word and, and declaring God's word. Declare what God's word says about God, about you, and about the enemy. You must understand that you are already victorious as a child of God. You're not trying to be free. You are already free. And as just taking your stand in prayer, taking the word of God, you must take your stand through the knowledge of God's word. And I want you to understand, child of God, you're not fighting alone. You have the Holy Spirit who is the one who's there with you. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost is always with you. He's always with you to, to, to enable you. He guides you. He leads you. He comforts you. He's there with you and never alone as a child of God. You are, you are more than a conqueror as a child of God. I hope all I've shared today has helped you understand what spiritual warfare is and how to properly engage with spiritual warfare as a child of God in prayer. I want to say thank you for tuning in with me for another awesome episode of my program. Join me next week for another awesome episode. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel.